Okay. Um, Nick Mortimer is an undergraduate on the Mathematics for Decision Science degree here at Greenwich. He's also president of the Greenwich University Maths Oc. Um, I understood that he spent all his time doing maths, but I see from his abstract, he apparently spends all his time watching crashy TV shows. So um, Nick is talking about um, how to play the weakest link. So. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Nick Mortimer from the University of Greenwich. And I'm going to talk about how to play the weakest link optimally, or how to devise a perfect strategy. So um, a few years ago, there was a, a question asked on the weakest link, a mathematical question, uh, asked to one of the contestants, and it went something like this. It works. He pointed it at the... He pointed at the... Right. In solid geometry, what H is the name given to half a sphere? Does anyone know the answer? Hemisphere, yeah. Um, but the contestant didn't say hemisphere, they actually said half a circle. <laughs> so um, the most basic strategy is obviously to have good general knowledge skills. If you don't have that, then hopefully this presentation will uh, help you with other strategies. So I'm just going to um, go through the rules. Hopefully most of you have seen the show before. Um, so I'll just do a recap. But if you haven't seen it, hopefully this will give you an idea of how to play. So we have the host, Anne Robinson, and we start the game with nine contestants. Um, Anne starts by asking the first contestant a question. Now whether they get that right or wrong, she moves on to the next contestant and carries on across the line right until the end. When she gets to the end, she starts back at the beginning again. Okay, um, this is the chain of money that you can win by answering questions. So uh, we start on 20, but this means there's zero in the, in the pot. If someone answers the question correctly, and the arrow moves up to the 50, this means that there's 20 in the, in the prize pool, but it hasn't been saved yet. So if, if answers are uh, answered correctly, like so, at any point, one contestant can um, say bank before their question is asked. So if someone says bank on 300, this means that 200 goes into the safe prize pool. That's now safe and is part of the jackpot for, for the show. Um, if at any point someone gets a question wrong, then the arrow drops back to the 20 and the prize pool stays the same. You can also bank after the first question, which will add 20 to the prize pool. And if at any point the team as a whole gets to £1,000, the round's over and we go on to the voting round where we try to vote off the weakest link. So each contestant holds a plaque saying which contestant they want to vote off. So in this case, Mark's the weakest link and he gets voted off that round. So each round, there's one less player, right up until round nine. Uh, round eight, two players play, but the money is tripled at the end of the round, whatever they win in that particular round. And round nine is just head-to-head -head final, five questions each, and whoever gets the most right wins. So we're going to be focusing on round one to eight in this presentation. So the first strategy we can look at is voting strategies. It's difficult to quantify this voting process mathematically because it depends on a number of factors. There's how important it is for you to build the prize pool and how important it is for you to eliminate strong opponents. So this depends on your own intelligence or general knowledge skills. If you've got very good general knowledge skills, it's obviously going to be more important for you to build the prize pool than it is to eliminate strong opponents. But if you're not so good with your general knowledge skills, then it's more important for you to eliminate strong opponents and, not, and, uh, more, and less important to build the prize pool. This is because your general knowledge skills aren't so good, so you want to get rid of all the strong opponents so that you have a better chance of winning. So there's several different strategies we can use. The most basic would be to vote for the strongest player every round. But how practical is this? Anne Robinson would no doubt pick up on this and start grilling you about it in between rounds, which is part of the show. And the worst thing you can do on the weakest link is make yourself a target to the other players. So that's not so, such a great strategy. Strategy two would be to vote for weak players early and then strong players late. The idea of this is to have strong players in the early rounds so that you can build a good jackpot, and then later on, eliminate the strong players so that you have a better chance of winning that particular jackpot. 
So this, you could say this is better than strategy one, but obviously, depending on your general knowledge, this could leave you as the weakest player by the time you start voting for the strong players. So the strategy I've come up with is a, a variation on the two previous strategies. I would wait for close rounds, i.e. rounds where several people get the same number of questions incorrectly, and then vote off the strongest of the players. I find this looks more innocent, honest. It gives a greater chance that you'll not be the only one voting for them. Because if someone's got very few questions in, uh, correct, then other players are more likely to vote for them. So we can see this in a table more clearly. We've got nine contestants in a round. The perceived intelligence rating is, is what you deem them to be from one to ten. So this particular player is very intelligent. This player is not very intelligent. And this is the number of questions they get correct in the round. So for my strategy, I would choose these three players, as they all got zero questions correct. And then I'd vote for this one, because he's got the highest intelligence rating that I deem to have him. So I would vote him off in that round and hope that other players do, did the same. So banking strategies are the ones where we can quantify it mathematically. And you can actually bank optimally, as you'll be able to see soon. Most basic strategy will be to bank after every correct question. So this would put £20 into the prize pool every time you bank. So suppose you get questions correct 50% of the time. So either you're not a very good player or you're in one of the later rounds when the questions are harder. We can do a decision tree for this. So this is for one question. As you can see, there's 50% chance that we get the first question correct and 50% chance that we get it incorrect. Correct earns us £20, incorrect earns us £0. We can then work out the average or expected winnings for this particular strategy, having 50% of the questions correct and banking after every correct question. And we do that by multiplying each branch of the decision tree by the total amount banked. So 0.5 times 20 plus 0.5 times 0, which gives us £10. So what about after two questions? We can extend this decision tree, like so. So it's the same here as the last slide, but then each one branches out into, into another question. This here is the total amount bank. So we've got correct, correct would earn us 40, because we bank here and here. Correct, incorrect would earn us 20, because we bank here and get this one incorrect. Incorrect, correct would bank us 20, and both incorrect would bank zero. So we can do the, then do the same and get the expected winnings by, once again, multiplying each branch by the next branch by the total amount banked and adding them all together. This gives us 20 pounds. <coughs> if you divide it by the number of questions in that round, it works out as 10 pounds per question. But what about if we bank at £50 each time instead? So rather than banking after every correct question, we bank when we get a chain of two correct questions, which would make £50 on that, on that money chain we saw earlier. So the probabilities are the same, because we're still answering 50% of questions correct. However, if you get correct, correct, this gives us £50. Correct, incorrect would give us £0, because the chain is broken here, and we haven't had a chance to bank yet. Incorrect, correct. Now the reason this is £20 is because we assume that this is the last question of the round, which means there's, there's, not many, there's not much time left on the timer for that particular round. So the strategy there would actually be to bank anything. So whenever we have one correct answer in the last, in the last answer, we bank it, which is why that's £20. And then incorrect, incorrect. So we can do the average winnings again for that in the same way, which gives us £17.50. Averaged over the two questions is 8 75 per question. So that's actually worse than banking after every correct question when you're getting 50% of questions correct. So you can see this in a table, that banking after every correct question at £20 is, has a higher expected winnings than banking at £50. And it actually turns out that no matter when you bank, if you're getting 50% of the questions correct, it's always more profitable to bank at £20 after each correct question. So, and that applies for, 
four, a chain of four questions.